Hey everybody, it's reporting live from my sofa and I am on another field trip again in the truck because it is the early morning and everybody is asleep at the camper. And I am dying to talk about these videos. So, we are here in the Lowe's hardware parking lot this time uh, doing some rogue filming. Anyways, as you know from the title, what we are talking about is the babysitter testimony. Now, they had a slew of these babysitters come up on that stand and we're going to specifically talk about Jody, or uh, Ruby Gale, Ruby Gale, mother-in-law of Jody, and uh, Crystal, and then uh, the one that takes the cake, bless her heart, Miss Joy. Um, so there's a lot to talk about here. Y'all, my, my uh, computer's right here, so if I'm looking down right here, that's what I'm doing. Uh, Mocha's right here. Let's get started. So... The first one that comes up there, Jody. I, I mean, and for, let me just say this about most of the defense's witnesses, but especially these. I feel like the defense is calling up, and correct me if I'm wrong, though, but I mean, to me, these, this defense was calling these people up here. Um, regardless of whatever. I feel like the defense is trying to paint this story with them, and at this point, I don't know what story that is they're trying to paint. Because I feel like the defense gets up there and tries to almost make them a character witness. And it goes incredibly down south up there. Every one of these babysitters is like, he is completely sane. He never showed any sign of any kind of mental illness. He knows right from wrong. He knows what he's doing. You know, uh, he never spoke about his mother. You know, on and on and on. That just is like all this stuff that's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I mean, this guy knew what he was doing. I mean, these are people babysitting his kids. So, that being said, you know, I feel like the prosecution gets up, and they just have to ask a few questions. Did he ever seem mentally ill? Did he know right from wrong? Did he understand your conversations? No more questions. And that's all they have to say, really. You know, except for the ones like Joy. Because, and let's go ahead and get into it. So, Jody gets up there, and let me just get into this. I mean, never saw bruises. House was immaculate. You know, Tim was a great parent. Um, you know, she's full of smiles, laughing up there. Um, but then also didn't appear to have any kind of mental illness, no mental defect. Um, and the prosecution gets up there because honestly with her, I'm like, where did this come from? And all I can think is this, and y'all help me out here in the comment section if you, you know, no different, whatever. Is if you look at the timeline of stuff, you go babysitter Jody, Ruby Gale, Crystal, Joy, and it gets worse. So it's almost like, I mean, maybe I'm doing too much thinking for the defense, but I'm like, are they trying to show a digression into mental illness or, or something? Because there it's clear, it seems to be these first two people get up there and literally are just like, I'd leave my kids with them now, you know, and... Uh, then you get Crystal up there, who she lived with him. She was, like, you know, romantic with him. And she paints a very different picture. And then Joy, who was the babysitter right almost up until the murders took place. And bless her heart. Oh, my God. I just fell in love with her on the stand. I, I really did. Um, I mean, I just felt like her heart was heavy. I mean, my gosh. Anyways, so... But Jody just made no sense to me. So I was just like, okay, well, clearly... You know, and, and almost to this level, right, his house is always immaculate. And I'm like, really? You know what I mean? Like, how? so he went from, how did that even happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just didn't even make sense. So I just honestly felt like she was not being truthful. Um, you know, because I'm just like, I mean, I, I don't know anyone I could say, well, there are a couple of people I could say their house is always immaculate. You know, but they have housekeepers and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but not even being able to say, yeah, I see some dishes in the sink. I mean, just this rosy picture. Well, then her mother-in-law gets up there, and again, it's the same type thing. She was also the babysitter. You know, I would have him as my child's father, okay? Um... You know, and I didn't really put too much here about Ruby Gale because to me they were one of the same. They just went on and sang his praises. Now, I have no doubt that some of these people who do these demented acts can present themselves to other people who would say no. I mean, we see it all the time with people they're married to or people who dealt with them in the public light and they're like, they, they butcher 20 people. There's no way. So I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But just hearing the testimony of these other people who ha were like, you know, talking about him being fairly normal, but still weird, you know, or seeing these little signs slip out of like, you know, this guy's, you know, like really eccentric with religion or, you know, the kids are doing squats or, you know what I'm saying? Like something. So 
uh, you know, but I mean, she's just talking, I never saw him beat those kids. There's never a mark on him, and, and, and you know. So, and then Ruby Gale gets up there, says the same thing, but again, the prosecution basically is just like, you know, again, they just dot their I's and cross their T's. Did he seem crazy? Yeah, yes or no. Yeah, did he do A, B, or C? Yes or no. Okay, thanks, no more questions. Done. Then, let's get to the juicy part. So, Crystal gets up there. Now, y'all, I have been reading the comment section of this. A lot of people want to talk about that outfit of hers with the pink halter top. Here's my theory. Um... I had to think about it for a second. Part of me wonders if she was doing that intentionally. If she was wearing that intentionally to get up there and kind of mess with him. Because you heard her talk about how he picked her clothes out for her. You know, so she had that skirt on. And I might be thinking too much for her. I, I, also, I think she just maybe didn't know better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, who knows? You know, but I, mean, did I think it was appropriate for court? No, not really. Does that matter? No, not really at this point. You know, I mean, she was so nervous and so scared and so young. She was 17 when she hooked up with this guy. I mean, really? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that part was just like, what? You know, she was young and naive, but my hat is off to that sister because she saw the right in the wall. She was like, uh-uh, no, absolutely not. And she got out of there, so good, good for her. Good for her seeing that it's like, this is not well, and I'm outie. You know, because, I mean, just what she was describing, I'm like, oh my god, it sounds like torture. This guy wanted to control people so much. Um, anyways, let me go over my notes here. So, it says he changed around February 2013. That's why I was trying to get into this. Well, maybe he they presented these two people up front to paint this picture of normalcy. Oh my god, he was so normal. He was so this. He was so that. Um, you know, so, I don't know. And then, all of a sudden, she's like, well, he changed. Um got more controlling, more strict, didn't want her to dress the way she did, um, you know, said that they would go out shopping, he would pick out her clothes for her, and I always wonder this, and y'all tell me what you think. I do think that there is, obviously there are religions that are like, look, women should be dressing a certain way. Do y'all think it's rooted in a way that it's like for, you know, even if like the Bible said this, where actually it's like, Okay, like, let's use him for an example. He's he's sitting here saying, well, no, the Bible says you have to wear like this. But it's more like, well, no, I don't want other guys looking at you. You know what I mean? Like a control thing. Like, I'm going to make sure, almost like the guy's going to go pick the ugliest thing out so that he knows nobody's checking her out. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so he can, like, have this control over her. Anyways. Um... So she talks about the church. She says overall it was a good church, but they have talked in tongues. And as the, whoever said the defense, of the prosecutor, you know, fall down and you know fall out, you know, with the the hallelujah and smack in the head, and they fall down and roll all around and stuff. And yes, it was one of those churches. Uh, but she says overall it was fine. You know, she thought it was a decent church. So, um, and then let's see here. Her, t I just felt I don't, I don't want to say because especially if she's watching, I don't want to be like, oh, I feel bad for her. I just felt like she was so nervous, and you know, she was, you know, being in that situation is so intimidating. And he's sitting right there, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like I just felt like, oh my god, just you know, thank God she got out of there. Yeah, just thank God. I just hated for her to have to be up there because I just felt like it wrecked her. You know, it had her slipping over words and the whole nine yards and whatever. Um, so this is another part. So, you know, she said that she's legally blind. She went to, which, you know, doesn't have much to do with it. Went to a school for deaf and blind. Uh, which, no, it does have something to do with it. So she's saying that the report, she was like, oh, whenever the officer wrote that report and I signed it, she's like, so it must be true because the officer wrote it. And then literally every single thing the officer put on there, she's like, no, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. And, you know, again, side note here, this is why, look at that perception. Well, the cop wrote it down. It must be true. We see this in everything in this case and this goes on all the time of no that's not what I said or no that's taken out of context or no this you know that's why you see these the, when you see these wrongful convictions and things like that this is what happens and I'm not trying to say this guy's going to be a wrongful conviction at all but in other cases like I thought this was a shining example of that where I was just like okay here she is just naively trusting the police and they're putting all these words in her mouth even though you know it was probably true <laughs> you know what I'm saying like but I mean she was just I mean she wasn't doing him any favors in either but you know she was just like no that's not the way I said that so just a little tidbit there anyways um 
So then the discipline came in. Now remember, she brought her child into the scenario. And the discipline started happening. And she was like, you know, you that I started having concerns. I mean, he would take them in the bathroom and whip them and she could hear them through there. And I mean, that's intense. You know, I, I can remember, so I got spanked as a child, and I'm trying to remember if I got spanked with a belt. I don't think I did. Maybe I suppressed it. Um, but I can remember getting spanked, like, hand on butt, you know, pants pulled down, you know, getting a whooping. It was it a lot? No. Um, more than that, I would get these, what I call a wake-up pop on the ass, like a, boy, what are you doing? Well, psh, you know, type thing. But like a, I messed up really bad situation. I mean, yeah, I got spanked, but not that much. Did they leave bruises? No, absolutely not. Um, so anyways, he, the, the discipline came in, that started taking place. She got concerned about it, obviously. And it says that she, you know, he became very obsessive and that she saw bruises on these kids. And, you know, it, it became a thing with them. And basically, you know, when they argued enough about it, that's when he started switching to doing uh, a hardcore exercise, tippy toes in the corner, these type things, which was still like, you know, really, is that necessary? Um, now, she does say that during this time he was smoking weed and drinking. She never saw him buy the drugs, but he would disappear. He would keep his door padlocked. So, I mean, this is this weird behavior that, again, I don't think is like, oh, well, there, that's when he flipped the switch and doesn't know what he's doing. It's just he got bizarre. So, and she made sure to say he definitely does not have mental issues, you know, and basically she had had enough of his stuff and she laughed and she went out of there. Um, and, and the whole time he knew right from wrong. He knew me. He knew those kids. He knew the whole nine yards. I mean, she just like, again, nailed that coffin shot of this guy knows exactly what he's doing and thinking. So, you know, let's continue. Then we get to the most heart-wrenching testimony of them all, Miss Joy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I mean, my God, I just, you know, I mean, it gives me goosebumps. So she kept the kids in Tim's house, and, you know, she says there's clothes everywhere, dishes piled up in the sink, roaches, trash overflowing, uh, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just going to hit on some a few t key points of her testimony. So, she went to Myrtle Beach with him and the kids. They basically went for a day and came back. They also went to Disney World. And this is important because this is where... I mean, she describes two things going on. Uh, number one... Pardon me. Uh, number one is him getting upset in the car and basically being like, I'm going to let them out on the side of the road to do squats. And she was rightfully so freaking out. Because all I'm thinking is, I'm like, are you going to pull over on the interstate? I mean, if any of y'all know what traffic is like depending on where he was at. You know, if you know what traffic is like down there, I'm like, oh my God, would you actually pull off on the interstate, like on the side of the road and make them do squats? Would you at least pull off on the exit? Like, you know, what are we talking about? Because he seems like the type that would pull off on the actual interstate and make them stand on the side of the road, which would scare the bejeebies out of me. Um, so, you know, she describes this. Now, some of them... So then in the hotel room, the scene goes down where he... He pulls her pants down, spanks him with a belt. And this is what she eventually called into DSS. But also, she's talking about the kids feeding them oatmeal all day. And this just, oh my God. You know, they're making her look at these videos. And she's saying the kids were hungry all the time. You know, and she's like, you know, of course I'm going to feed them. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, because basically all he fed them was oatmeal. Like, that's all they ate. And them saying things like, please don't tell dad that, you know, we ate this because he, he won't feed us. I mean... You know, that's just, I mean, God bless them. You know, God bless them. To, to know hunger at a young age like that is not nice. Um, now, she had to eventually quit over transportation issues. And she went into this little, you know, tangent about the car and all this. And I guess people were saying or somebody was saying that, oh, you know, it's, she had a falling out over the job about money. And so that's why I guess he was trying to make it like she was disgruntled or something. I don't know. Um, but she's saying that, no, it was a transportation issue and it was basically a personal issue with her family and a car. And that's why she had to quit working for him, basically. Um, and so, but he claimed that she owed him money because he was basically like, I, I paid you out for a couple of weeks. It was this thing, I guess, or whatever. And so essentially he was trying to say that she was disgruntled. Um, but she did call DSS later and the, okay, this is the scary part because again, 
after hearing her testimony and then doing a comparison to the um, the DSS worker, where she was like, I didn't want to call, I knew, I knew that nothing would happen, and, and I mean, nothing happened. You know what I'm saying? They didn't do anything, but I mean, she's watching what's taking place, and she doesn't know that during the time that he's beating these kids in front of her, and it's like, these are my kids, you know, making it clear, she said that, that she would try to stop him, but he made it clear, these are my kids. You know, he had an order to not touch those kids. So that right there, again, and how would she know? I mean, he, he's the only one that knows that. So that right there could have saved their life so much. But, you know, it is, I mean, I'm not blaming her at all, but it's just like, when you, hindsight, when you see the whole picture, but you get how it's disconnected and there's a disconnection in it, it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, if we could only have connected those dots. Um... It was also interesting that the kids were not allowed to talk about their mother when she talked about that uh, photo album they brought out, and then they hid it when the dad came home. Um, I mean, very fascinating. Very fascinating. So, again, a common theme, especially with her and the uh, Crystal, was that women are to be seen and not heard. Uh, you know, all this stuff. Now, the other ladies didn't talk too much about that. Um, but, again, you know, Miss Joyce sits here. I mean, all of Joyce's testimony was not very pretty. Yeah, I mean, it was like, no, this guy's not feeding these children. He's beating them. He's doing weird workout stuff with them, uh, you know. But on the same note, you know, she was like, you know, these kids love their father. You know, that was their father. It takes a lot for a kid to not love their father. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's their parent. I mean, she just, you, you could just tell that she had this genuine love of children and a genuine intuitiveness and understanding of children, if that makes sense. And so that's why her testimony was so powerful to me because I was like, this woman was really in touch with these kids and so I believe every word she was saying I think that he was probably using food as punishment not feeding them only feeding them oatmeal you know malnourishing them basically you know the 20 piece nugget thing you know uh, splitting that up I mean you know it just sounds like he was underfeeding the children um and then I mean obviously a, a staple of oatmeal and you know oatmeal and then maybe some fast food thrown in there isn't that great um so anyways, this video is getting long. I apologize. I, if you're still with me, thank you. Uh, and so again, I'd love to hear what y'all think about the babysitters, their testimony, what they had to say. Uh, and just drop it like it's hot down in the comment section. And y'all know, I think the closing arguments begin this coming Monday. Uh, so I think it's June 3rd it is, uh, Monday, June 3rd. So very interested to see how this goes. Uh, I hope you all have a great weekend or week whenever you see this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.